What's up everybody, I'm Jason, welcome back. In, in this video, I'm going to be talking about some interesting things that I have discovered with the EOS R5's audio recording capabilities or behaviors and uh, expanding on the way to make your, or get your R5 or possibly R6 to work with a Zoom F6 given the F6's uh, line out attenuation problems. So I'm going to start with the, the Zoom F6 workaround side of things before I talk a little bit more about the camera. So to recap briefly, the Zoom F6 field recorder has a, a built-in attenuation capability that is there to allow you to bring the line out level signal down 48 decibels to be mic level. However, when you, due to the way the uh, product was actually designed and built, when you set the line out's attenuation to minus 48 decibels, the noise floor um, basically goes through the roof and you get a staticky signal. You get a lot of noise in your signal. And by and large, it's not capable or uh, it's not, you can't really use that signal as a uh, scratch audio track on your camera. There's just too much noise. Now, in response to this, uh, another YouTuber, audio recording expert, Curtis Judd, put up a video talking about how to use a, or that you sh could use, if your camera doesn't support line in uh, level inputs, what you, should, what you should do is you should get a 50 decibel pad cable. Um, there's a number of them on the market. And a 50 dB pad will uh, bring a line level signal down to mic level for a camera. So you would turn your F6's line out uh, attenuation off, so it was putting out a full line level signal, and then you would pad that down to mic level where you would plug it into your camera and set the gain as you normally would. Now, that's a perfectly good way to go about doing things. You could even say that's technically the correct and best way to go about doing things, but I'm not a big fan of buying more cables, uh, especially when I'm prone to losing the ones I already have or, or finding that I didn't bring the right cable when I needed it. So I went about looking for another workaround. Now, the interesting thing that I discovered in the F6 uh, line out attenuation problem is that the noise floor varies according to how much attenuation you use. So if you use a small amount of attenuation, the noise floor is still going to be very low compared to if you use a large amount of attenuation. So you can uh, kind of think of it as the attenuation is bringing the top down of your, you know, of the, your signal and your noise floor is fixed. So as you add more and more attenuation, the top comes down and you end up with a lot of noise and not so much signal. So what I was looking for is, is there a way to compromise? And what I found is that, yes, there was. You could use a small amount of attenuation, uh, in my case, shooting with a 5D Mark IV, uh, approximately 20 and a half decibels, to drop the signal enough that if you then went into the camera and set your record input level all the way down to as low as it goes, you would get a, uh, a, a appropriately set a set of recording levels. So the six decibel, minus six dB test tone that the F6 generates would produce a minus six dB signal on your camera. Okay, so what does this have to do with the R6? or R5. Yeah. The question came up in that uh, the discussion on that video of could you use the same settings that I had come up and given for the 5D Mark IV on the EOS R5. Uh, now I haven't had the, hadn't had the camera long enough to actually start shooting video with it. I've been mostly doing stills and trying to get uh, familiar and comfortable with it. Uh, so before I posted anything, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I wanted to make sure that I was posting the right thing as a response. So I hooked the camera up. I set the attend, you know, the record audio record levels to uh, manual, audio recording to manual, the record level to one. Plugged it into the F6, 
and uh, started playing with dialing in the test tone because, uh, as I said, the, the process, you know, you use the test tones to set up your 6 dB uh, point on the camera. What I discovered in this process is that the F6 or the, R, the EOS R5 has some form of analog limiting going on at very, that comes into play at very low uh, record levels. Uh, certainly below 25% of the scale and possibly even below um, five or six clicks of uh, settings. Uh, so what happens is at recording, at record levels above, I'm going to just say 25% because I don't have the exact number, I didn't try to find it, but at recording levels above 25% of the scale, the camera will clip your signal digitally, so you'll, you'll hit 0 dBFS and get a digitally clipped signal before you run into any sort of built-in limiter or attenuation in the camera. However, at very low uh, record level settings, the camera will actually uh, attenuate the signal somehow before it, or, or limit the signal somehow before you actually, it actually converts it into a digital file. And uh, I confirmed uh, that this was going on by making some recordings and looking at the waveforms and sure enough at uh, you know, the settings that I, using similar settings to what I used in the 1D Mark IV, so a record level of one uh, and an attenuation on the F6 of minus 20 and a half decibels, the tops and bottoms of the test sine wave that the camera or the our recorder puts out were clipped or attenuated in a weird non-digital way. So digital attenuate or digital clipping results in a perfectly flat signal. The, the sine wave would go up, hit the uh, 0 dBFS point, and then go straight across until the input signal dropped uh, below 0 dBFS, uh, below the limits of the analog digital converter. However, what I was actually seeing looking at the uh, signal that I was reco recording is that it would hit a peak and then it would decay and then it would pick up at a lower, um, a lower voltage, essentially, or a lower signal level as the, the sine wave dropped back down. And so I'll show that right here, that this is what it ended up looking at. And this might be digital, but it doesn't look tremendously digital to me. Um, now, I don't know why Canon did this. Uh, I have a feeling that it might actually have something to do with actually protecting the camera, because if you're running very low record levels, be, you would have potentially a very hot signal coming into the camera, and it may just be that the, the you know, record circuitry and amps or something like that were uh, you know, sensitive enough that it, it could be a problem, uh, or the, the voltages used internally could cause it to be a problem. Uh, in any event, this means that you can't basically use the same settings on an R5 as you would do on, say, a 5D Mark IV. So I went off to find a, a solution to this. Now, obviously, the first and most obvious solution is to actually just pad the signal. Uh, you don't want to turn the attenuation up any higher on the F6, again, because that increases the noise floor and it reduces the, uh, the quality of the signal you're getting out of the camera or out of the rec recorder. Uh, so you would need to put some kind of uh, attenuation in after the fact. So let's make a long story short. There's an attenuator built into the camera. Uh, it, the Canyon, Canon has actually had an attenuator built into the 5D Mark IV and other things. It's an option you can turn on in the, uh, the rec sound recording settings or the audio recording settings. Uh, however, when I was messing with the 5D Mark IV, I found that the attenuator caused me to end up with clipping issues where uh, it would clip the signal instead of attenuating everything or, or something to that effect. But there was a reason somewhere that I, something that I ran into in testing that it caused me to not use the attenuator on the 5D Mark IV. On the EOS R5, the attenuator appears to just attenuate the signal. And it's about a 
Uh, I think it's about a 10 dB pad. It could be a little bit more or a little bit less. Uh, but the short of it is, is if you turn the attenuator on in the R6, the, there is enough attenuation there that you, it pushes your record level out of this range where it's being hardware limited and into the range where you hit the full, uh, you hit the zero dBFS full scale clipping, uh, digital clipping limit of your signal. So, if you're trying to hook an EOS R5, possibly an R6, up to a uh, Zoom F6 field recorder using the line out with attenuation, uh, these are the settings that I have found. So I'm still using the 20 and a half dB attenuation on my F6. I'm doing this in part because it lets me run 5D Mark IVs and R6s together with just a splitter cable, uh, you know, so I can sync multiple cameras based on the audio track, as well as I don't have to keep reconfiguring the, uh, the um, F6 every time I switch from one camera to the other. On the EOS R5, in the audio recording options, first we, you need to set it to manual recording, the uh, same as you would on the 5D Mark IV. Second, you want to turn the attenuator on under the wind filter and attenuator option. And then third, you're going to set using the 6dB uh, test tone on the F6, your uh, actual record level. Mine is somewhere around 30 to 33% on the bar. And that seems to provide a, uh, a signal that uh, works across the board. So that's that's the, the practical side of things, um, attenuating the signal on the R5 or dealing with R, the R5 and hooking it up to the, the F6 recorder. I should point out, I don't expect this to actually be a problem for most people in practice, uh, especially if you're using a regular microphone instead of something that's putting out a very hot, say, line level signal. It actually wouldn't be a problem at all if the F6 didn't produce uh, a noisy line, uh, a noisy mic level signal itself. Um, because basically, once you get anything above that bottom five, uh, you know, bottom few positions on the record level on the R5, it, you get the full scale available. It doesn't clip at, uh, uh, it doesn't attenuate before it clips digitally. Okay, so that was the, the practical side of things for people who are interested in getting their R5 to work with a Zoom F6. In the process of investigating that, I ran into something that's a bit more esoteric. And I seriously doubt it'll actually be an issue for anybody, but in the case that it is, I, it's something I think is worth talking about. So before I get too specific in that, and this is kind of, as I said, an esoteric thing, it has to do with the byte ordering of PCM audio files. Now, like I said, this is a, a, a very low level technical thing, uh, but digital data that takes up more than one byte of storage has to be ordered in some way. And there's two ways to do this. One's called Big Endian and one's called Little Endian. And it has to do with whether the byte, uh, the, the multi-byte piece of data is put down or stored with the most significant byte first, so most significant to least significant in order of increasing addresses, uh, you know, positions, or the opposite, least significant to most significant. Outside of that, um, just understand that if you read something that's written in big Endian with something that expects little Endian, you get garbage data and vice versa. So you, you have to, there has to be something that defines what the byte order used is. Most modern uh, f storage things, so for example, uh, H.264, H.265, um, AAC audio, define a standard byte ordering. 
So it's either that the file is specifically has to be written in a specific byte ordering. Other formats, such as PCM audio, allow any byte ordering or either byte ordering. And so you can have big endian PCM audio and little endian PCM audio. Now, there is no, with little endian, as far as I can tell, being the most common in PCM audio. Now, just to be perfectly clear about this, there is no negative quality consideration here. It's not like a little endian PCM file has better quality audio, audio than a big endian PCM file. They both store the exact same data. The only difference is the way in which it's stored in the file. Uh, where this potentially becomes a, a problem is that some software may not be written especially old software, may not be written to support one or the other. Uh, primarily, in the case of PCM audio streams, Big Endian. And the way I discovered this is in the process of trying to look at waveforms recorded of the, the uh, clipping behavior that I was seeing in the R5, I tried to open the video files in Adobe Premiere or Adobe Audition CS6. Now, CS6 is going on like eight years old now, so it's, it's pretty antiquated as far as software goes, and it would not open the files. Now, the, the video side of things is just H.264, and Premiere knows our, our audition can play that back no problem, so I, I went off to start trying to figure out what was going on with the audio side of things, because like that or the container was the only thing that was wrong. Uh, or different, potentially. So I brought the stuff into uh, FF Probe, which is a command line tool, uh, part of the FFmpeg suite of video and audio encoding, uh, transcoding pack, uh, uh, software. And I went through and I was looking at the audio stream. And I noticed two differences in the uh, R5, EOS R5 audio stream, PCM audio streams, compared to the audio streams that I was getting from the 5D Mark IV. The first change is that on the 5D Mark IV, the audio stream is marked as stereo, whereas on the EOS R5, the audio stream is marked as two channels. Uh, and I don't know enough about the details of what FF Probe is showing and what PCM uh, audio streams do, uh, but stereo is, a, is of course two channels, and two channels is of course two channels, but having completely different um, demarcations or notes or however you want to put it, uh, I don't know what's up with that, but that's one difference. The other difference was, as I said, the endianness. So, on a 5D Mark IV, the PCM audio stream is listed as uh, PCM underscore S16LE, which that translates to a PCM audio stream using signed 16-bit integers in little endian byte order. On the EOS R5, that the, the same part of the audio stream, the definition is PCM underscore S16BE, which obviously signed 16-bit in integers in big endian format. I'm not sure why Canon did this. I, 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 my suspicion at the moment is that the Digic X processors are actually big endian processors and the previous uh, architectures that Canon used in the other older Digic processors were little endian. Uh, but I don't have anything to really back that up. The, uh, the reason I suspect this is there's no reason for Canon to have switched to big Endian uh, PCM streams. Uh, they're not more compatible than little Endian. Uh, the only thing that it would really do is if the camera's processor or the audio uh, conversion hardware in the camera was a big Endian thing, 
and so it saves a little bit of processing. So instead of having to reverse every, uh, every byte, essentially, because it's a 16-bit file, so it's two bytes of data per sample, instead of having to reverse every byte, they set a flag at the beginning of the stream that says it's in big ND in byte order, and they just dump the whole stream out. So it saves a little bit of processing resources, and obviously, uh, it's as a camera, it does have some limitations in terms of how much processing it can do. Uh, of course, it's also possible that they didn't realize it or something like that, and since it works in most software, nobody know, would notice. With that said, I do want to put out a, a call for some assistance. So I'm interested to try, or interested to see if the EOS R6 and the Canon 1DX Mark uh, III which are both cameras that also use Digix X, uh, Digix X processors, also produce big Endian audio, audio file, uh, PCM streams or not. So if you have an EOS R6 or a EOS 1DX Mark III and you're interested in sort of helping me with this, um, leave a comment, let me know, and we can try to get something to either have you check it, which uh, it's easy enough to check in software like Audition or um, Audacity or something, or, or even FFmpeg, uh, uh, or to, to get you in touch with me so that you can send me a really short, it, like it can be a, a, ha a second long recording of you know absolutely nothing with the lens cap on, uh, of uh, video from the camera, just enough for me to be able to. Uh, look at what the streams are actually being written out as. Um, my suspicion at the moment is that the R6, because it's close architecturally to the R5, probably has the same behavior. Uh, I'm interested, though, in the 1DX to see what that's doing, uh, because it's entirely possible that it could be doing the same big Endian thing, um, you know, and well, maybe nobody ever noticed. Uh, which actually honestly wouldn't surprise me because I never would have noticed if uh, I hadn't gone looking for it and hadn't tried to open the files in an ancient version of Adobe Audition. Um, additionally, sort of as a completely tangential aside thing and the last thing before I wrap this up, is that may also explain a behavior I've noticed on the EOS R5 with respect to playing back content. The camera can play raw files from basically any other Canon camera. It can play video files from any camera that has the video files recorded with AAC audio. So I can stick a card from, uh, you know, stick an SD card in an EOS M3, record a video clip, pull the card out, put it in the R5, and it'll play back with sound just fine. However, if I put a card in the R5 that has video recorded on it, from my 5D Mark IV, I get an error that says that it can't play back the video. And there's no reason the, the video streams are 30 megabit H.264 in an MOV container. Uh, there's no reason that, that the streams are, there's nothing apparently different about the streams except the PCM audio track on the 5D Mark IV is in Little Endian and it uh, the R5s are in Big Endian, and that may be the problem. I haven't tried, I think if I set the R Mark IV, the 5D Mark IV to MP4 container, and uh, a I get AAC audio, so I should probably try that, uh, and I may try that later, but um, that's just another little quirk behavior that I've noticed, uh, possibly related to this Endian is issue. So, in summary, uh, you can use an R5 with very similar settings to what you did, would do with a 5D Mark IV and a Zoom F6. Uh, you just have to turn the attenuator on, the, on in the camera and increase the record levels from 1 to somewhere around 30 to 33 percent. Again, if you're going to do this, use the minus 6 dBFS test tone output on the F6 to uh, set your levels appropriately on your camera. Additionally, it appears that Canon has changed the byte ordering of the PCM stream on the EOS R5. I don't think it should be a problem for the vast majority of people. If it is, 
you can losslessly convert the files from big endian to little endian it doesn't need to you don't need to recode re and reencode anything there is no uh, data being thrown away you just have to have software like ffmpeg that can flip the bytes around and output the new headers um, so with that said thanks for watching and uh, until next time